when I begin a class on the evolution of birds, I surprise my students by saying, there's this unannounced quiz to which they are not happy. So I'll show them some of these pictures and I'll say, is that a bird? And then they'll pause and they'll say, yes. And then I'll ask, is this a bird? Is this a bird? Is this a bird? And then they sigh, you know, a breath of relief where this quiz is easy. Yes, it is easy to identify a bird. I then ask my students, well, then how'd you do it? What features did you use? And they'll list some. So for example, they'll say, there are feathers, there are wings, birds can fly, they have a toothless beak, etc. Uh, and these are fine for the list. Looking at animals alive today, you can use these features and correctly identify which animals are birds. If we wanted to look more closely at bird anatomy, and we do, uh, there could be a large number of additional things that you point out which make birds unique today. I'm going to focus on skeletal features simply because we want to compare these to dinosaurs. So something like the bird reproductive system or the four-chambered heart, difficult if we don't have fossils. So you could point out that in bird feathers there are different kinds, multiple different kinds. Among the broad contour feathers, uh, some are asymmetrical, being adapted for flight. Uh, others allow for the warm-blooded endothermy uh, type of metabolism that birds utilize. Although birds have many of the same bones in their arms as I do, such as a scapula, clavicle, humerus, radius, ulna, carpals, etc., they are unique in their structure. Uh, the uh, bird shoulder joint uh, with its uh, fused clavicles or furcula, its scapula and coracoids, and uh, the way they uh, meet, uh, which allows a muscle tendon to go through an opening, uh, the position of the arm bones, the fact that many of them are fused to form a carpometacarpus, uh, the uh, reduction of the fingers, the very long arms that they possess, uh, these help to convert these arms into wings in most birds. Bird legs are unique. If it wasn't for the fact that they were bipedal, they could not use their arms as wings. They have unique hips with an open hip socket, a syn-sacrum where it fuses to the vertebral column. Uh, their feet are very long, so they walk on their toes and their ankle is high up on their leg. The bones of the ankle and their orientation is unique. Uh, the typical uh, position of the toes is that three toes point forward and the one uh, faces forward and is retroverted, forming a perching foot. Birds have a unique skull, lightened by a number of openings. Many of the bones are fused. The beak is toothless. Uh, the cranium leaves a large space for a large avian brain, which allows complex uh, avian behavior, such as brooding over eggs. The vertebral column and the thorax are unique, uh, with a long neck, chambers in uh, bones for extensions of air sacs, uh, at the tip of the tail a syn-sacrum where vertebrae fuse to the hip, a small pigo style uh, with the fusion of uh, remaining tail bones, a modified thorax which re uh, withstands the stresses of flight with reinforced ribs, and a large keeled sternum uh, for flight muscles inside the chest uh, where the trachea uh, divides a syrinx, uh, which allows for song production. And thus, armed with this long list of features, and we could certainly add to it, one could say, aha, I can confidently identify birds. Birds have these features, and no other animal comes even close. And that is true today. You could use this list to correctly and easily identify birds. However, if we were to include fossil animals, specifically fossil theropods, virtually none of the items on this list work because almost all of them either evolved in the ancestors of birds, which were dinosaurs or even before, or they did not exist in the first 
birds and evolved afterwards and so thus are not a defining feature of birds but of later subgroups of birds. It is actually very difficult to identify a bird if one includes all of the fossil animals and there are still discussions. Should Archaeopteryx be considered the first bird? So should Anchiornis be considered a bird? Rahone Avis is a dinosaur that was once classified as a bird as were others. So this video was meant to introduce Introduce a number of other videos which pursue this topic in depth. That the avian features which make birds unique today evolved over 80 million years in the theropod dinosaurs before the first birds and in the 150 million years since the first birds. So these characters have gradually evolved over very long periods of time.